As of September 2020, Samoa is one of only 12 countries with no confirmed cases of the coronavirus, which continues to threaten lives across the world. In 2019, Samoa, with a population of just over 200,000 people, survived a devastating measles outbreak, resulting in the loss of over 80 lives. Now another threat has the government of Samoa in emergency response mode. And now with COVID-19 near its borders, Samoa's government continues to enforce strict state of emergency declarations. The measles epidemic in Samoa was quite a... Um, I think it was a very hard time for the country. To the health side, you know, from perspective, um, I think we have a lot to, to do, to work on. Samoa nurses who were in the front line of the response to the measles epidemic, including working with other ministries to deliver at-home vaccinations for measles, have strong feelings and memories of the measles epidemic. This required the considerable support of volunteer health workers locally, regionally and internationally to stem the crisis. We need to prepare and things that we need to address so that the people in the country will know and understand about what's going on. You know, help basically. It's a necessity, it's a need for the people to know. But then it's not getting to where it should so that all the people will know. Because uh, at the end, it's help for all. See, it's for all the country, not just one or two families or just a few villages. Mm. You no, know, we've lost lives and we don't want to go through that again. We'll have some gaps to look at. You know, COVID-19 is a worldwide problem and many lives have been taken, so prepared is, I think uh, we'll go on the line for that. <laughs> no, we have to enforce it because uh, I'm talking from a Samoan perspective. You know, we, we do it now, we say, oh, we're COVID free. And then we just uh, ignore all the protocols and everything. We'll go back to the same old thing. From what we're having, you know, the state of emergencies and things, most or all of the villages and families, um, they, they've been abiding by it, all the distancing thing, especially when they have the flying to pay, those 2,000 Thai. With the lessons learned, the Samoa government quickly implemented measures to combat the COVID-19 at its early stages. These were introduced and implemented by early January 2020, and included medical clearance tests valid three days prior to arrival in Samoa, quarantine at the last port if the person's origin was from a country with confirmed cases of coronavirus, a negative COVID-19 test before being allowed to board a flight to Samoa, and ultimately the closure of Samoa's borders to international travel, allowing only specified flights and conditions for returning citizens. This included Samoan citizens who are resident in Samoa, recognised seasonal employment workers and Samoan students returning from overseas institutions. Internally, schools were closed, social distancing was introduced and the number of persons attending a gathering was severely restricted. Persons over 60 years of age were confined to their homes. There are acknowledged limitations to its efforts to combat the coronavirus. Samoa for example, has only recently acquired testing kits and the equipment to carry out testing for the coronavirus. Samoa also has a limited health workforce and has a population at higher risk of infection and complicating factors such as high rates of obesity and diabetes if the coronavirus was introduced into the country. The first experience was the measles last year and that brings the idea of what's going to happen. When the state of emergency was declared in March 2020, schools were closed, a rapid and decisive decision as in stark contrast to the delays in school closures during the measles outbreak in late 2019. The Ministry of Education, Sports and Culture has attempted to meet the needs of students around Samoa. And we decide something in order to reach the students because there's 
we don't know when will be the you know schools will start again and we came up with uh, a new idea of uh, preparing notes and call the parents to come and pick it up from from school so that's our first option in order to reach the students and able to teach the students what they were staying at home. However, the disruption in education has been concerning for many parents, including Simi, with 3% of the population aged 15 and older holding the first degree or higher in the last census as at 2011. Few parents in Samoa have attained the tertiary level of education. Yeah, Parents are concerned about their own ability to attend to their children's needs to teach subjects such as mathematics and science. I put it in percentage, I think it's 50-50. Uh, because some parents are um, making an effort to come and pick it up, but some students, even the parents, never make it. So we can tell from the work that's been submitted, some students are consistent because the parents are keep coming, pick up the new stuff. But even the school will try to create a chat room so in order to reach other students that are not able to make it. A shift to online learning also highlighted issues both rural families and families at the lower end of the socio-economic scale to access a stable internet service and also their children's ability to access laptops, mobile phones and other internet capable devices. For teachers, this shift in the teaching mode from face-to-face -face learning to online strategies has been stressful as the time to adapt to this resource-constrained environment has been short. With teachers themselves returning to the classroom, it is uncertain how long face-to-face -face teaching will continue. Actually, it's a rapid change and it's, you know, it's sudden change from traditional mode of teaching and learning to a new, you know, way of trying to reach the students when the lockdown was uh, started and no one's prepared for it. The challenges of school closures were accompanied by the additional stress of unemployment faced by many Samoan families. So my son was born on April the 9th during the COVID-19, but from then we started to have difficulties of money because of our less working hours. And then we have support from our family, so we're thankful for that, my mom, um, her family, so that's how we're managing at the moment. The tourism sector, which had been devastated by the measles epidemic, suffered a further downturn during the pandemic when the Samoan government closed its borders to all but returning citizens. Many Samoans in the tourism, travel and service sectors were laid off, in a sector that employs over 12% of the working population and contributes approximately 25% of the country's gross domestic product. With the lockdown, actually has a major impact in the lives of our members as most of our members were employed in hotels and restaurants. Some of our members were relying on selling goods for survival in the market. So when the lockdown happened, things started to slow down. Um, they tended to grow vegetable gardens, but even with that, due to the fact that the um, corona 19 has a major impact in the economic status of our country you know families of persons with disabilities were the most vulnerable ones and i think they are continuing to be given that some restrictions are still not lifted special rates that have been advertised in an attempt to encourage local tourists and patronage has met with limited success. During this time and this period of COVID-19, it's a big difference with our measles. What I mean is at work, 
we have less working hours. We work 24 hours I mean a week. And hotel is not as usual as it was before. We, we do have locals, but not that much. Unless we have specials, you know, going on for breakfast or at the bars, then that's when we get busy. Your pepe is Sarah, who runs Samoana Beach Bungalows together with his wife, which at this time last year was bustling with tourists, are quiet with no idea of when occupancy will increase. Understanding that, you know, there's a lot of pressure for the government to try and, and help all the sectors, uh, you know, in Samoa. But with, with, with us and uh, the staff, um, I guess that's what we were trying to, in the beginning, uh, offering limited hours and trying to keep the key staff that we, uh, that we had so that if the situation changed with COVID-19, we're able to bounce back uh, quickly, having that resource in, in place to, to carry on business. Uh, some of our staff now, uh, uh, with me personally, uh, we have had to reorient and refocus on uh, development of our uh, agricultural uh, initiatives or plantations. Uh, I have a, a plantations in the village of Astouta, so we've been able to utilize some of those uh, staff and give them uh, a few more, uh, a few more hours to just to support their families. Uh, but again, you know, I, I have to earn that money personally from other sources of income through uh, a nine to five job that I do, um, not only to support my family, myself and my own financial commitments, but uh, at the same time trying to support some of, of, the, of the people that helped us uh, to, through business to, to the extent where we also have to start thinking about looking after ourselves uh, at the end of the day. The government has initiated a plan of action that includes the absorption of interest on loans at the local banks for three months to 2%, a reduction on electricity and water costs for six months, and a special payment of 300 tala for all pensioners under the Senior Citizens Benefits Fund. To supplement families' income to cover costs of living, Samoans are turning more and more to their relatives who live abroad, primarily in New Zealand and Australia, to send money home. Remittances account for 503.73 million tālā and was the top foreign exchange earner in 2019. <laughs> O famonyanga maile matanga luenga ala manuia malepa so so tau au ai maniu sila ya lela na mo ai ya Lawrence na na ngaluenga ai fa ngaluenga ai o ngaluenga fasimani. In Australia and New Zealand, many of those affected are in the service sector, where a significant number of Pacifica diaspora are employed. Olo vso swani mai pe o ya iva ya sa taita sile misi lava i tupela for mai. The internet banking, it transfers to my area to pay more to see in my phone now. I learned to learn 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 to After almost seven weeks at home, during the strictest restrictions under the state of emergency declarations when schools were closed, a father and his two sons have created their home school schedule. The mother being employed in New Zealand has provided the opportunity for the family to migrate to New Zealand, but for the time that they are here in Samoa, it falls to Simi to continue the role of both parents. Ka 
ona wa 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 fa ma ya wa afia no manga lu ma ya wa lo pei lau ida le wa kau fu fu anga ya ripa keki ole ole a ngala le ma le fa fa chai le ona ole a nga ida ya pei lau me lo me tu a lo ma me ole fa cha ole ole me si le ola ya se si fi so so ani lai ti ti ma ya ya ina ia cha to fa cha cha li ai po le ar kai mi ko le le fo i ma mo ko ya nga lu ma ya o o le o le afia nga ke le nga ue ile fa ma ile ar ko na vai ile nga cha to to no nga lu ya fa pe fo ya wa o nga ta mai on may 29th the first repatriation flight brought back samoan citizens and residents from new zealand since that time to now there have been several repatriation flights from New Zealand, bringing home an estimated 2,000 people to their waiting families, and with them the anxiety that COVID-19 could possibly enter the country's shores. The first repatriation flight from Australia landed on the 4th of October 2020, bringing home 300 people, and so the future of Samoa was not set in stone, but they continued to be resilient. Whatever, whatever comes, oh. Negative impacts or positive impacts, we have to let the people know. We want to, like we have that mindset, we have to not to tell them because it's a negative thing. They, they, they won't like it, they don't want to know. As the world continues to respond to the pandemic, so too do the people of this small Pacific Island nation, one of the last refuges free from COVID-19 virus.